Hello, everybody, and welcome to Second Sunday. Hopefully, I am not super blurry. It looks blurry. Uh, I'll have to cue in with the team to see how it looks. I am streaming live from our new farm here and our new hemp farm that we have just moved to, uh, my fiance and I, so that we can really expand our our work in in natural healing. You know, I'm I'm known more for my energy work. He's known more for his natural medicine with hemp, cannabis, and all that good stuff. And here we are in Fifty Acre Farm, that is uh, close to everything, so that we are able to really create a a huge um, a, a, a huge level of living for ourselves and be able to help other people. So we are moving in and the house is chaotic. So excuse the background and the lighting a little bit. Hopefully the message is going to come in clear today. Uh, I will be uh, standing by with my team to make sure that it's, it's all good. Um, just checking in with her real quick. She's in Ireland. Uh, and make sure that she can hear us and see us. Otherwise, I want to jump into April's second Sunday, okay? So here we are, April. This year has gone by so fast, hasn't it? It's like, yeah, last year at this time, we were a month into our pandemic. We were kind of like scratching our heads, waiting for all of our limitations to be lim lifted, for us to get back to our regular lives. And that literally has stretched out an entire year hasn't it and here we are kind of now you know faced with uh do i vaccinate do i not vaccinate do i wear a mask do i not wear a mask you know if you're in the united states it's really kind of a torn space for you know half of the population is, is unmasked and half of the population is is wearing masks a lot have chosen to get the vaccine a lot have chosen not to and and it really comes down to you know where you are where you live what's going on in your part of the woods your your you know your part of the planet and 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 really kind of becoming who you are regardless i mean i think that's that's what we're really noticing this year is okay it, it's like all these limitations all of these challenges that we have it's like but who am I in this challenge? You know, who am I with this limitation? Who am I, you know, stuck? Who am I, you know, as a creative being here? And that's really what I want us to focus on. You know, we had the Easter energy, which is always about the resurrection. We had, you know, now April is like tax season. So it's like mixed together that, that power and that pain. And, and, you know, as far as the energy message that I have, for this month is something that I'm working very uh, diligently on a new project that I'm creating an advanced quantum leaping course. It is very much a course, not a workshop because it is very strategic in the formulas. It is a very exact quantum leaping process about frequency and vibration. And I am kind of knee deep in the creation of that. And I'm always using my students around the world to, uh, work in understanding where our, our biohacking and our shortcuts are, because I always integrate every body of work into my own personal life to maximize my own potential. And then I share it with my students and, and my clients all around the world to see if it is as user friendly for me as it is for them. So the feedback I'm getting is phenomenal. Uh, our, our teacher training group right now all over the world, uh, we meet twice a week and we are literally fine tuning this art of creation and working in kind of understanding how easy and simple the universe is when we kind of get out of our own way. And that is the message of this month. I really want for you to focus on understanding of why you may still not have what it is you want or be where you want or do what you want or have what you want. You know, we have a tendency to believe that we are creators and then naturally because of our five senses look to the outside to determine why we are not free, why we do not have, why I can't be or, you know, what I'm not able to do because of circumstances. But bringing it back to that creator within and saying, okay, none of this is actually, none of this actually has anything to do with me. 
right? This is my virtual reality holographic experience that I have been planted into here. Yes, I have been acting it out. Yes, I have been interacting with it. Yes, I do believe to a certain level that what is happening around me is real. But at the same time, I have this sixth sense, right? That I know that I can change my circumstances. I know that I can be more. I know I can have more. I know it can create more from no matter where I am. There's like that, that paradox within you where you're scratching your head wondering why everything is still the way it is. And then there's a part of you that understands at that peaceful level of everything's happening for me. Everything is showing me where I am in alignment and where I'm not in alignment. It's not about the world being in alignment. Something very, very important that you have to be clear in understanding is that the world does not need to be in alignment for you to be creating your reality. It has nothing to do with you. You are a universe within yourself. You are determining your state of being and your state of being determines your point of attraction. There are a lot of people thriving this year. There are a lot of people that are making huge shifts in their reality. There are a lot of people that are becoming well. There are a lot of people that are, are more abundant than they've ever been. There are a lot of people who are choosing to use what the world is throwing at them as a kind of a dance off, as a challenge based limitations, right? Challenge accepted. And then there's some that are using circumstances and using relationships and using the physical reality simulation as their proof to live and vibe and and believe where they are limited and what they're allowed to do so with that idea the concept for today april right here we are this resurrection energy which is like wow you know i could come back from the shadows i could come back from the dead i am resilient i am the phoenix and on the other hand it's like oh i gotta give away half my wealth to you know the government or the government is still controlling what i do so how are we both of those things how are we in that push pull where you know exactly who you are but then you're still upset about what the government is doing right or, or what your your mother is doing or the relationship you have with your kids it's like it, any relationship simulation will fit in that concept so my question for you is, is exactly like, where are you in that push and pull? Where are you stuck between knowing and yet believing what you're seeing and, and trying to somehow make a life out of that? Knowing that you are allowed and worthy and deserving and love. And then on the other side, not allowed, right? Not loved, right? Not not feeling deserving, right? Not feeling worthy in certain areas. How are we both? Well, we're still, some of us are still playing out the game of duality, which technically in the game of duality, you are, you're both. You're the lowest consciousness of your own soul and you're the highest consciousness of your own soul, all embodied in physicality, right? You're here in this vehicle with, you have two very unique innate abilities to understand and determine who you are from two different perspectives all the time one version who is very analytical very black and white very fearful very very um pri very much about pride okay and then there's one of you who is just happy to be here right you're proud of your accomplishments you're proud of how far you are that you're proud of what you've been able to live through. You're proud of what you've been able to create. And that is the absolute message of the month is let's dive into this duality concept that keeps getting you guys stuck, right? It's pride versus proud. So when we looked that up in the dictionary, which I did, it literally has the same meaning. Okay. But let's get real scientific here. Let's dive into how we're using those two frequencies differently, even though they could have the exact same definition. 
we cannot use those two definitions the same if there's two major aspects of us. Now, I always teach me, myself, and I, and the inner child is kind of the one that's like, mom, dad, can't we get along right? That center point of your own awareness, which is the best and worst of you, but is very childlike. But for today, we're just going to kind of use these I, this extreme concept between pride and proud. It is something that blocks every single one of my clients. It has blocked me for most of my career, even as a teacher, because it's such a fine line between pride and proud. Okay. So I thought I would use the message of today since there's so many great energy reports and, and so, much, so many of us are in still uncertainty. We're still kind of waiting it out. We're still, you know, doing the push pull with our own belief systems. We're still kind of feeling stuck or trapped in certain relationships. This message is for you. Okay. This will help you so much with just the, the slightest understanding of, you know, frequency and vibration. You know, it's like one aspect to the left versus one aspect to the right is a quantum leap. You know, if you choose to look at something from the eyes of pride, you're going to have one reality. And if you choose to look through the eyes of being proud, you're going to have another reality. Now, what holds you up 100% in your life as a creator is never when you're proud of yourself, ever. Proud is another word for appreciation. Right. It is linked to its sister frequency, appreciation and gratitude. Right. Being proud versus pride is about the lower aspect of you feeling a sense of pride or using pride to be oblivious. True statement. Be oblivious to its own pain, trauma and limitations. Let me give you an example. Okay. I see this all the time in my teaching. I see it in every I've ever met. And I have seen this very much in myself. And when I actually kind of tuned to paying attention to it, I was like, oh, wow, this has been slowing me down. All right. So this idea of pride is when you are holding your state of being intact to protect yourself right it's like i know who i am i know what i stand for i know what i believe right and it's like a child is like i don't know what i believe right you're saying i know who i am i know who i am i know who i am and pride is the perfect example of being very arrogant and insecure at the same moment and i know we've all been there you know it's like Oh my gosh, I'm so much better than that person because they're not even on their spiritual journey. They're so asleep. And then yet over oh, here watching, you know, a guru speak, you know, to the ninth dimensional whoever. And you're like, wow, I, I am in total comparison and jealousy in the same exact moment. Right. And so that is what pride looks like, where you believe yourself to be better in certain aspects than others. You believe yourself to be further along. You believe yourself to be more intelligent. You believe yourself to be, you know, a higher, you know, species or higher point of evolution. And then at the same moment, at that same time, covering up the fact that you're wondering why your life is not working, right? Pride, right? Proud, the simplicity and, and, and grace of proud, right? Wow, I'm so proud of myself today. Today, I didn't judge anyone. Today, I did not criticize myself. Today, I made the best of the finances that I have. Today, I saw the wounded child in my mother versus seeing the angry, fear-based, you know, judgmental, um, controlling par parental figure, right? I am beginning to be more kind to myself. I'm proud of the work that I've done so far. I'm proud of the fact that I am love and that even though I have been hurt many, many times, I am proud of who I am in that ability 
to still give. So if we're going to look at frequencies here, it's so cool because pride is about true cowardice. And being proud is courage because courage defined is vulnerability, right? It's like I am where I am and I fully accept that I am doing my best, right? I am proud that I didn't smoke today, drink today, cuss today, hurt someone today, hurt myself today, you know, judge anyone. And then the other one is I am holding my life together through my false belief systems because I really don't want anyone to know that I'm not proud of myself. I don't want anyone to see that I don't feel good enough to put myself out there. I am using pride to create masks of beauty and finances and success to avoid right myself of how i actually feel about my failures about my breakups about my lost connections about my heartbreak you know reality that i am coming back from this is the very the biggest spiritual trap the biggest metaphysical trap the biggest ego trap the biggest human trap of our own evolution okay Here's why. Because when you're using pride to look through the eyes of, you're living as your own hero. Like, you're, you know, you are striving for excellence instead of just being awesome, right? You're always striving with pride. It's like, I'm working harder towards. Tomorrow will be better. The next course will certify me right? The next person will see me and love me. It's that striving forward. We've all been around an arrogant person. Very different, very different than someone who loves themselves, okay? Arrogance is disguised, right? Insecurity. You'll notice arrogance, and a lot of my clients say, oh, self-focus and self-love is so arrogant and i said let me break down your differentials here and explain to you how it is completely different arrogance must put down others in order to feel bigger okay that's arrogance that would be associated with narcissism or sociopath right arrogance is about i must make you feel small so i feel big right so it's insecurity that has kind of a big mask around it and that's what someone who is living their life through pride a false sense of self will constantly be projecting which means when you're around someone who is who is you know puffed up with pride to protect their insecurities you're not going to feel really good around them you're going to feel like you're gonna feel less than, you're gonna feel small, you're gonna feel insignificant. You may feel like a billion dollars walk into a room with someone who's got a big pride and all of a sudden you're feeling uncomfortable, right? Because what they're sending is, is I do not want you to see me, I do not want you to hear me, I do not want you to know me, so I would like for you to know this instead. Here's my accomplishments, Right. Here's what I'm working on. Here's what I'm doing. Here's the money that I have. You know, it's like that idea of the billionaire, you know, wearing clothes, you know, just from wherever they found him. And the, and the, the person who's struggling is wearing the Gucci belt. Right. Because it, the appearance of abundance, the appearance of success, the appearance of of knowledge. And I have had a lot of students over the years use spiritual training as pride because now they can speak the metaphysical universal truths while hiding the fact that they can't manifest paying bills or get their body in it where it wants to be right so um it doesn't look like it looks like we're, we're good i'm just taking a break here because i had a team member jump in just making sure i'm live Otherwise, I will have to redo this, right? Okay, so I'm just going to keep going. 
So this understanding of pride versus proud, this will shift your entire world overnight. It will make everything that you feel stuck and blocked about very much present in your reality of why. You know, you're asking why. You're telling the secrets of the universe to the world and then therefore you're going home and scratching your head and being like, why am I still not making a living at this, right? So it is letting yourself sit in the mirror and going, where am I using pride, ego pride, we'll just, we'll name it that for our discussion here, to hide from myself, right? Where am I using ego pride so that I can hide my humiliation trauma, right? So I can cover up shame and guilt. So I can use resentment in the face of look what I have done. Look what I am accomplishing. Look at how no one is helping me. All right. And when you study frequencies, especially as I've been working in creating this course, you know, humiliation is usually what pride is built out of. Right. I, and I have no problem sharing my own pride story here. You know, I was humiliated as a child constantly. You know, we were poor. We were, um, we were like every kid's worst, worst fears, like poor, broke. But, you know, we lived in a very abundant neighborhood where, you know, everybody had more than us. You know, I felt very ugly, very insecure. I was, you know, the bigger girl. I was overweight compared to the other girls. I didn't have the cool parents. You know, I had the parents where you were like, oh, my gosh, mom dropped me off down there. You know, it was like I always felt a state of humiliation no matter what. And that taught me to learn to cover up my humiliation. So instead of going, I am humiliated here. Um, I mean, I'm proud of the fact that I do have a mom. I'm proud of the fact that, you know, this, I didn't know how to be that as a child. Um, so with that being said, it's like, I used a mask to cover up that humiliation. Do you know where my toy happened? I don't know, honey, look in the garage, I'm live here. Love you. That's okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, so then with that understanding, you know, I learned to wear many, many masks, right? I don't want to feel humiliated. I don't feel the shame and guilt of, of not, you know, meeting my own requirements in life. You know, I can feel, we can feel shame for the way we look and try to cover that up. We can feel shame for our finances and try to cover that up. But in metaphysics, right, in, in quantum theory, what we are looking at either as a yes of I see you or yes, I'm covering you up, there is only one frequency that the universe responds to and that is yes. So if I'm hiding, my failures, I'm hiding my insecurities, I'm hiding my self-judgment, I'm hiding my self-loathing, I'm hiding my heartbreak, I'm hiding my pain, I'm hiding my misfortune, I'm hiding my poverty, I'm hiding my, you know, a cravings and inability to, you know, create with my own body, then instead of actually accepting that I am hiding, I will create a false sense of self and I will be amazing behind, you know, in front of the mask. While behind the mask, I'm scratching my head like, okay, I know I just taught this or I just told somebody this, but like, it's not working for me and I can't let anybody know because now they're calling me, asking me for advice or, you know, I'm, I'm a big wig at my company or, you know, I am, you know, I've gotten the, the body as long as I control every aspect of it where I want it. And, you know, I have, this, this, this point of control here that as long as this stays stabilized, I'm okay, right? Our OCDs, our abilities to focus. So the challenge there is us, right? Being able to sit in the mirror and say, where am I using pride to chase my life? And where am I using proud to be safe in the present moment? Because we can all be proud of something that we're doing immediately. Okay. It, it, it's like the most simple childlike thing in the world. I don't care if it's, you know, you, you made a good breakfast for yourself or, you know, you got to the gym or you finished a task that has been, 
you know, tearing you apart or you finally spoke your truth to someone, right? It's like, it does not have to be some lifelong accomplishment of success. It's the simplicity of the vibration itself that alters your state of being very quickly. And the, the, the reason why quantum leaping doesn't work for most people and being able to shift into a different parallel reality is because they don't realize that their state of being is what is required to shift. Their state of being is, is hiding behind a mask. And so actions are about chasing and running after and looking forward to the life that they say they have. Ooh, uncomfortable, right? And what I did was as a kid, it was like I turned humiliation into success. And I worked very hard. My work ethic was impeccable. You know, I got into real estate, made a whole bunch of money, you know, bought the house, bought, you know, had had this story on paper of what it was looking like. Great. Okay. Um, and then it was like, of course, you realize that that was a false sense that was a false sense of self and here's how you know you're like well Jeff, you actually had a good job and you worked really hard and you made money isn't that shouldn't you be proud of that yes of course but here's the thing about the universe that's very interesting is it's not what you do it's why you're doing it right it is it is your your motivating factor of your actions that will determine the outcome because let's be honest, and this did happen to me. If my job goes away, right? If my money goes away, if, you know, my diet crashes tomorrow, if I, you know, let my roots grow out, right? If I expose some part of myself that I'm not wearing makeup for, it's like, am I going to feel, am I going to feel that level of abundance and superiority? Am I going to feel that pride? Of myself and the answer is absolutely not because I have been building a huge life out of humiliation protection so safety issues are always underneath pride right no no I can't go with it or I can't do that those people are beneath me you know my empathy is too strong right I don't associate with that I don't eat that I don't do that that's pride because at the simplicity part of yourself, you are a being who is designed to flow with Mother Nature in the aspect of creation through understanding and becoming your true self, which is perfectly imperfect. Notice how the people who love you the most don't love your money. They don't love your wisdom. They don't love how you dress or, or you know, the things you're good at. They, they love the awkward parts of you. They love the freckle or the, you know, the, the scar that you hate, the, you know, the bushel hair in the morning versus the perfect glam. They, they love the you that is not holding it, the world together for the appearance of, right? And I think what happens is we get on this metaphysical journey and we start studying like crazy and we accumulate so much knowledge that we instead of putting it into action and and accepting failure like i'm going to get this right until i get this right i'm not giving up on myself we feel that somehow because we have the formula that everything should be perfect like okay i know that law of attraction works this way and when you try it a few times you're actually embarrassed or humiliated to say still not working for me Unless you're in your private session with your, your mentor or coach, but publicly you're like, oh yeah, I manifest this, 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 because you're afraid of failure because failure hurts. We're afraid of not getting it right. So we cover up the fact that we're not getting it right. We're afraid of love. So we either push it away or choose the wrong people that can't hurt us. Or we, you know, or we make up a story of why we're not, you know, and we don't need that. OK, so what I want for you guys to pay attention to, especially as we're moving into our access of this divine power, we're moving kind of away, even not away, but integrated through the fifth dimension into the sixth dimension, which is becoming the aspect of who you truly are. It's an integrated higher self. It's like when higher self and, inner, and, and lower self are like on the same team. There is no pride versus proud. There is just appreciation and acceptance, unity. 
unity of returns, right? So I wanted to read you some of these characteristics that I kind of dug around to find this morning to help you guys kind of locate more efficiently uh, when and how you're doing this. Because the best thing about this journey is that when you are ready to accept things about yourself that are uncomfortable, that's when the progress really picks up. When we hide behind knowledge or our, our, our past successes, we don't grow, okay? So it's like, you know, at the base of pride is fear. So what are you afraid to be found out about? What are you hiding? What secrets do you have? What feelings do you have about others that you would not publicly share, right? And then on the other side, proud is, I love the fact that, you know, I still judge, but I'm working on it and I'm, I'm doing better. Okay. Power versus force in that pride. You, ass you assert power to feel safe, right? Like I have my boundaries. Everything in my house is perfect, right? My bank account is here. My body looks like this, right? I am telling you how I'm good power, right? And, and force is like moving energy. It's like using, it's, it's like using um, ebb and flow. It's like using this kind of understanding of, um, you know, like, uh, you know, kind of like going, going, instead of forcing something, it's allowing something, it's like accepting something, right? So the true self is, is, is about vulnerability. It's about, you know, what? I'm working on it. You know, like I tell my students all over the world all the time, I've been at this for over 15 years now, like individually, and then collectively, sorry, my chair's rolling. Um, I have been teaching professionally for over seven years. And for me to admit, you know, a year or two ago that I'm like still working to get this right. Like, hey, I'm still working on it. And there's no pure enlightenment here. There is someone who is every day proud of the fact that I'm overcoming my wounds and, and traumas by tearing the walls down that I have built to hide from. Like I have hidden from my own trauma. I've hidden from my own pain and therefore I have to build a pseudo personality to kind of use a bodyguard so that nobody actually can get to that pain. And what that does is it keeps us away from love. It keeps us away from abundance. It keeps us away from freedom because the universe is only yes. So understanding that, right? And I think I might have messed that up a bit, but that's okay because we're here just appreciating ourselves today. But let me find another one here. So. You'll notice that when you're pride based, it can ver it can feel very self loving because it's all about you, right? It's like it's like what well, what do I have versus what you have? Pride is going to be constant comparison and jealousy that you hide. Okay, now let's go to proud. I'm proud of me. I'm proud of you. Like I'm so proud of you. I I mean you can't. I can't tell you how many times a week I'm telling my clients this or my students, like, I'm so proud of you. You, you, you're like, well, you know, I didn't get, I didn't do as much as I wanted to. That's pride. But I did do this. I am proud. It's, it's focusing on the small victories versus constantly being the victim of what you're not perfect at, right? You're going to su super accelerate like a child sweeping the floor incorrectly. You know, the mom's going, oh my gosh, but if I'm proud of that child and say, I'm so proud of the effort you're putting in, that child's gonna get better. If I go, you're doing it wrong, which is pride. I need it perfect. People are coming to the house. That child is going to learn that it is not good at that. And it is bouncing off of mom's fear of not being perfect. Therefore the child becomes imperfect in its own eyes. Okay, and this is a relationship you're really having with yourself. So um, I'm trying to find the key point so I don't blab all day with you. But it's more about the individual state of being like, why can't I have that? I deserve that. You know, why is that person getting that versus, you know, I am proud of the person I am becoming. The thing you'll notice the most when you switch from pride to proud is that you don't want to be anybody else. You don't want to have anybody else's life. You don't want to trade your past for anything. You don't want the, you know, you don't want to run to the future. You don't um, judge or criticize that mirror you are happy with your own becoming. This is the real healing journey that we're on right now. This will flip your entire reality, but first, 
right? The truth will set you free, but first it's going to piss you off. When you start to see, okay, I want you to look at every area of your life right now that is not flowing madly with abundance, freedom, and love, where you do not have absolute potential, right? Where, where you know, maybe your bank account is not exactly where you want it to be, but you've got so much potential. You know, maybe your relationships are, are beginning to shift, right? But they're really opening up. I want you to look at where your time is being managed more through play and joy and the busy work and your to-do list is, is going quicker for you, right? Where your own health, whether it's the way you look, feel, or, you know, are inside is becoming a better relationship with itself, which means you are, are starting to enjoy your own energy. Now I want you to look at the opposite. Where are you? looking at the bank account like it's not enough or just enough. You're frustrated, you're resentful, you're um, confused. Therefore, I need to hide, right? Or I need to divert and go spend so that I can feel abundant. Pride, okay? Time. Telling people that if you have more time, you're going to do this, 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 this. If I had free time, I would do this, 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 this. Then when you get free time, you do nothing. Pride sabotage it's a constant state of sabotage because here's the thing in order for us to move out of a state of of lack we have to be okay to fail we have to allow ourselves to look stupid we have to be rookies we have to be beginners we have to not be know-it-alls we have to we have to feel the ugliness within ourselves at times we have to take responsibility ability to respond the fact that the money sitting in our account is not a vibrational match to who we are and we're not okay with it but in that way of more of it being a you know i'm 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 proud of what i've been able to create so far and if i get out of my own pride maybe because pride is a wall and a mask right? Children begin to build the wall of pride or the ego identity at three, four years old. We call it the terrible, terrible twos because they're starting to embrace their unique vulnerability. They're beginning to assert their position. They're beginning to express their personality. And oh boy, does that trigger mom and dad who not at all okay with that because they're hiding behind their own mask well i don't want a child who looks like that does that says that pride ruins all relationships it stops your flow of money it it causes your time to never have enough or have too much right it's always the inconsiderate driver that you get behind when you're in a hurry because pride of humiliation of shame and guilt of letting someone down it's covering it up and notice how the universe is a total bully to you notice how the universe is a bully to your pride and when you are proud it's a loving mother it's a strong father figure in your life it's like it, it the relationship switches you will never be supported by the universe as long as you are hiding behind pride because the universe is designed for balance, not control. It is designed for flow, not a, a dam that you have created to stop the energy of the whole world. You are here to have virtual experiences with everything and everyone. You're here to be allowing and you become allowing when you allow yourself. So I'm always saying it. If you want to go far, be okay with looking stupid. Right. Be OK with even as a guru saying, you know, I don't have the money thing figured out all the way, but I'm working on it. Right. I'm, I'm biohacking this. I'm I'm figuring out the shortcuts. I'm learning from my own mistakes instead of learn from me. I know the formula. OK, so when my whole life fell apart in 2008, when the market crashed, I had no job, no house, no car, no credit because everything was emptied. I had no checking account. I had no thing. And it was this moment of that humiliation resurrecting that I had been hiding behind. And it's funny because when you're hiding humiliation, it will feel like depression. Depression is hidden humiliation. Depression is, I don't really know who I am or what I want to do anymore because every time I do anything I want to do, I'm either criticized, judged, or you know, ridiculed for it. So I have just completely shut down and disassociated and compressed my own emotion. And therefore, depression keeps me from doing anything. 
So the depression that I was trying to use money to create joy from in my old life all crumbled. And there I was in all of my humiliation, losing my house publicly, having my cars seized. It was like my childhood all over again. My you know, wealthy neighbors going, oh gosh, and me having to see that. It was a moment of true humility that I would never take back in a hundred years because it was the beginning of living a life of being proud. Now, I'm not going to say that I didn't still take some of that pride with me and start my new life and had to, you know, get smacked in the face a few times by the universe to show me that pride does not give you abundance. Pride does not give you success. Pride does not give you love. It gives you the storm that is going to crash it. So any wall you have up, anywhere you feel stuck, anywhere you feel blocked, anywhere you feel challenged is actually coming from your own wall, own mask that's covering up either fear, humiliation, shame and guilt, or resentment. And that's what we all have to sit in. April showers bring May flowers, peeps. So here we are, right on time for us to look at our own pride versus our own proud proud is so childlike i'm so proud of myself you know i'm with pee, pee on the potty right i you know i know my abcs and it's like we're jumping up and down you know as parents like i'm so proud of you and then you know you're 45 years old and you make an extra 100 bucks that week and you're like i only made 100 bucks this week and how am i going to get by and this isn't enough realize that if you said i made an extra 100 bucks this week like i actually sold something i actually did something if you were super proud of yourself, the universe would begin to move all of that energy because proud is appreciation and, and what you appreciate appreciates and what you are hiding behind pride begins to wobble, which means your white life always feels like it's on a wobble. Not to mention here, there's a biohack for you. Notice how you are noticing how much pride is around you. Like, mm, that person is hiding behind pride. That person is insecure. That person is arrogant. That person is this. Notice where you are noticing and you will notice your own. Notice your own hypocritical judgment of your own ego there. Okay? So the message this month for April, the energy messenger of this month is where are you being in your pride where you could flip it over to proud and begin to open up the floodgates of abundance for yourself? Where can you open up your freedom for yourself? Where can you let go of the people who have hurt you and the places that have hurt you to allow yourself to go out into the world and fail publicly in the most beautiful way? Because when you accept the fact that I might have to fail at this a few times, the universe says, nah. The fact that you're willing to fail, I'm not going to help you fail. Like, I'm going to help you thrive. You only fail when you're using pride. You only fail when you're using pride. And the reason why is pride is a mask. And the universe can't speak to you through the mask. It says, okay, she's pretending to be successful. She's pretending to be abundant. She's pretending to be beautiful. I mean, you guys look at my old videos, right? How much makeup was I wearing? Like, I mean, I was hiding behind. Like, look at the eyeliner instead of my face. Like, you know, look how awesome I am. Like, and, and that was even in my career. And it, the world has just been smacking me in the face and smacking me in the face and giving me lessons and, and challenging me into my own proud until I was like, okay, let's just rip these masks off. These last two years, I've been working on these workshops called the training, which is basically having to become a warrior of your own BS right? Knowing where you're playing the victim, where you're playing the perpetrator, where you're being the arrogant person that's keeping freedom and abundance away. It's not a comfortable workshop, but it was a big mover for me. It allowed me to tear so many walls down built from pain to protect myself. Then the I am training came for me to be able to stand perfectly and perfect in who I truly am. The vision quest was about learning to tear walls down that I had built out of heartbreak. And then the Master of Love workshop that we just finished that has basically given me the opportunity to be vulnerable enough to receive my greatest expansion of life, which is my new fiance, this amazing firm that we're on, and being able to truly kind of uh, walk my talk more without having to use any sort of pride to say, well, you know, I manifested this. It's like, I'm just, the more I'm myself and the more I, I know nothing, the more that the universe provides with opportunities and potential. Because if everything is just vibrating potential, 
and you are not letting yourself be potential because you're trying to hold in a certain identity you're frozen in time and you can't budge therefore the universe says I will crack you open. I will tear your pride down. I will help you hit rock bottom. I will crush your car. I will hurt your body with you so that you can see that you are the most you when you're vulnerable. And vulnerable is the true definition of strength. It's actually the definition of courage because that helps you walk with the universe, right? The flower that buds out of the ground in the early spring is vulnerable, right? It's susceptible. Yet it thrives because it knows who it is. And sometimes it doesn't thrive, and that's perfect too. Sometimes it has to rebud and come back into bloom, and it does stronger and knows itself more. And this is where we are. So, April flowers, you know, April showers bring May flowers. Let's shift this month your biggest quantum leap from pride to proud. Practice it for 24 hours. Notice how your relationship changes with yourself and notice how your relationship with other people change as well. And then notice that the universe will start being proud with you, of you, for you, through you, to you. Okay? Good message for this month. Definitely learned it the hard way because I'm stubborn. And that's why I always share my shadows publicly in my classrooms. If you're just hearing me for the first time, I have an academy online. It is the Quantum Academy. It's jessicaalstrom.com. Soon to be Jessica Hines. Change my name. Yep, you're right. I am. And that is available on our um, uh, on my website. I have a list of workshops, a list of courses. If you're just seeing me for the first time, I would I would suggest diving into warrior training. That's going to help you get to know me the best and get to know you the best faster. All of my workshops are designed to biohack and cut your time on this because I've made every mistake publicly that you possibly could make. Divorces, heartbreaks, whatever, lawsuits, it's all been present. So I have figured it out, the shortcuts, and then practiced the shortcuts in my academies all over the world. And therefore, we have kind of perfected the formulas. So it cuts out the middleman of trial and error and allows you to jump from these workshops into what has taken me 10 years, probably would take you less than one year, and move into a place of being a divine creator with the universe, a deliberate creator versus creating by default and scratching your head because you're confused that you know so much or you've done so much of this. It's okay if you've been at this for 20 years and you still can't manifest extra money. It's okay because I'm proud of you and I'm proud of you because you haven't given up on yourself. You're here, you're now, you're listening, you're aware, you're saying yes. And then therefore the universe will say yes. So catch me on my website or check me out more YouTube videos that I've got. I'm also Instagram everywhere. So dive into yourself and let's get to work being proud of who we are up until this point. All right, guys. See you soon.